is to leaving the gallery that this Parliament is in session, and therefore they should leave the gallery as quietly as possible, please. The next item of business today is a Member's Business Debate on Motion No. 9302 in the name of Fiona MacLeod on UV radiation awareness to prevent melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those Members who wish to contribute to the debate could please press the Request to Speak buttons now. I call on Fiona MacLeod to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by thanking all the members across the parties who signed my motion uh, so that we could debate it here in Parliament today, and also the many members who I know are wanting to contribute to this important debate. Can I also thank MASCOT, the Melanoma Action and Support Scotland group, for the briefing that they gave not just to myself but to other members and to welcome them to the gallery. I hope they're here. <laughs> Um, and not standing in a queue waiting to get in. Um, presiding officer, just last week I was completing or attempted to complete the Glasgow Herald crossword and there was a clue in it and it was a clue for a three letter word and the clue was sunburn and the answer was tan. And I thought that was quite helpful because many of us still think that to have a tan is a good thing but sunburn's a bad thing. And that clue just put it into perspective. Sunburn and tan are the same thing, and sunburn can cause malignant melanoma. Every year in Scotland, about 1,200 people are diagnosed with malignant melanoma, and the main cause of this is UV light damaging the DNA in our skin cells. That is sunburn. And we can get that from the sun and from sunbeds. And from that it's clear that this is a preventable cancer, almost entirely preventable. And sadly, over the last at least four decades, the numbers of people being diagnosed with malignant melanoma have been rising. And in April 2014, uh, we learnt from ISD figures that in the last 10 years alone in Scotland, the numbers of men with malignant mel melanoma diagnosis have gone up by 43%, and for women, the figure has risen by 30%. So with these figures before us, with this rise before us, but also with the understanding that this is almost an entirely preventable cancer, what can be done about it? And I would like to suggest to the Chamber that there's three areas we should be looking at. We should, look, we should be looking at education, advice and behaviour change. We should be looking at early diagnosis and treatment, and we should also be looking at research. On education, advice and, and uh, behaviour change, this should be about lifelong education. We know that most parents nowadays, with their very small toddler children, get that, remember the Australian slip, slap, slop? We wouldn't think of letting our toddlers out into the sunlight without the cream on, without a T-shirt on and without a hat on. And nowadays, in our nursery schools for our three and four-year-olds, we spend a lot of time talking to them and taking care of their skin when we take them out. But I believe that this has to become a lifelong education process so that in primary school or in secondary school, when our pupils are going out to do perhaps physical education outside or to take part in outdoor education trips, it should be standard practice that we talk to all of the pupils about putting on their sunscreen and putting on their hats. And if we can make this lifelong education, then it will become routine for all of us to then take care of our skin when we're out in the sun. And we know that this approach works lifelong education and we know that it works in affecting behaviour change because we just need to look at the smoking cessation figures over the same 40 years that melanoma cancers have been going up. We've been stopping smoking and the, num and the percentage lung cancers has been going down and that has been so much about education and behaviour change. Now, MASCOT itself... Um, through a grant from the Sunter Trust last year, went into 28 schools across the Greater Glasgow area and spoke to 8,000 pupils. And I think that is something that we need to be supporting. And I'm delighted that I know that they'll be going into some schools in my constituency this year, um, I think in Bishop Briggs. So it's about let's make sure that we support organisations in that 
uh, edu lifelong education. The other area I talked about was um, early diagnosis and treatment. And for that, we, we need to be looking at self-examination so that we are more aware of our skin. We can do self-examination. Mascot, through the Alliance, have got a self-examination pack that includes a DVD to teach us how to do that. It means we'll then present to our GPs earlier. And I would suggest that GPs need to be more aware, but perhaps also community pharmacy is a place that we could go with way of concerns if community pharmacists get the, the training. And this is really important because early diagnosis of malignant melanoma is one of the best ways of treating it and curing it. The five-year survival rates on malignant melanoma, if it's caught early, can be 100% survival rate. If it's caught late, it's 8%. So we have to think about this, get self-examination and get our professionals up. I, my, my last point was about research, and I think it's probably a bit too difficult for me to explain. But I, So I, what I want to say is we need to be looking at doing more research on this. My husband's PhD, a way back in 1976, was looking at the function of ribosomal protein S6. And I'm going to have to read this bit out. It was specifically looking at a protein complex called mTOR, and that's uh, implicated in rapidly developing cancers like melanoma. And the hypothesis uh, way back then in 1976, when my husband was doing this research, was that if we can turn, turn down mTOR activity, then perhaps we can slow down the cancer. Well, 38 years on from that research, there's two conferences in Europe this year looking at exactly that hypothesis and seeing if we can take it further. So a wee plug for my husband's PhD from all those years ago. But you start small and you can perhaps get somewhere with it. So in conclusion, presiding officer, I wanted to have this debate today so that it could be part of raising public understanding that a tan is not a good thing. We have to take care of our skin. I also wanted to use it as part of the process to change behaviour and change attitudes. And also I wanted to have the debate today to thank Mascot for the work that they do for so many people in so many ways, in education, in supporting research, but also in one-to-one -one with people once they've been diagnosed. Thank you very much. Many thanks. There are a number of members who would like to contribute to this debate, so if I, I could ask members to keep to their four minutes, please. Ken McIntosh to be followed by Aileen McLeod. Thank you, President Officer. And can I begin also by thanking Fiona McLeod for bringing uh, today's mm. A motion for debate. Her, in fact, her motion on skin cancer is particularly timely as we head towards the summer months and many Scots will be rushing to welcome the sun rather than to treat it with the respect it deserves. Just last week, we were given the clearest evidence why fair-skinned Scots, of all people, need to be careful. We've seen a 40% increase in skin cancer in this country in just one decade. So make no mistake, this is an epidemic and we need to respond appropriately. And yes, there have been many advances in the treatment and in the earlier detection of melanoma, but this is one of the most preventable of cancers. The 40% rise in the number of people affected is almost entirely down to our own behaviour, our sun-seeking behaviour. And the long-term answer has to lie in changing that behaviour. Before I move on, can I also thank Lee Smith and our colleagues at Mascot for all their work to raise awareness exemplified by the first-class briefing circulated in advance of today's discussion. Many of our MSP colleagues who will not be able to take part in the debate will have read this document, and I doubt any of them will not have been struck by the case to take action. The stories are too moving. This is a cancer which strikes down young lives, which leaves others scarred and damaged, and which for far too many leaves them saying, if only I'd known. Well, now we do know. And yes, I am pleased that we took action on sunbeds here in Scotland, but that was only ever supposed to be the start, not the end point. Sunbeds are only one small part of the problem. The sun and tanning is the main issue. Protecting our children and warning adults about the dangers of sunbeds is simply not enough. We have to educate people to cover up in the sun. Now, the good news is we know it can be done. Fair-skinned Australians have shown us the way. Despite a far hotter climate, 
They have a better record on prevention, on earlier detection and on treatment. The Slip Slap Slop campaign, which Fiona referred to earlier, led by their cricketing and other sporting stars, was hugely influential. And I have to ask, why have we not used the Commonwealth Games to send out a similar message? I know that Mascot suggested a uniform for the volunteers at the Games, which could have highlighted the advice to cover up with long sleeves and either a wide-brimmed or a kepi hat. Would this not have been one of the best legacies for the Games to give the people of Scotland? It's certainly not too late to promote that message in our schools. Nurseries on the whole do tend to have very good, clear sun protection policies, but the same cannot be said of primaries or secondaries. It is not just fair skin that is the most vulnerable, it is young skin. And again, I would praise the work of Mascot in raising awareness amongst pupils. I would urge the Minister to do more to work with them and with other charities, such as Cancer Research UK Ineffective Health Prevention. President Officer, there are so many issues to raise, simply not enough time. Returning to the issue of sunbeds, ministers did promise a review of the sunbed legislation if it, was, if it was not enough. Well, we know that children and young people are still accessing these machines. I've reported one just last uh, month in my own area. We know of others in Airdrie and Glasgow. One salon chain were offer, offering free sessions on a Saturday recently, and I was shocked to see their advertising on TV. Is it time, ministers should perhaps be asking, time for a licensing regime? A few years ago, I remember one of my MSP colleagues in the SSP uh, being mocked for asking for free sun protection cream. But it should not least be available on prescription. It's available for vitiligo patients to prevent skin cancers, but not available to those with skin cancer. The good news again is there have been a number of breakthrough treatments developed recently which offer huge hope for saving lives and improving the quality of life. Advances in radiotherapy, for example, have made a major difference to patient outcomes. And immunotherapy, or immuno-oncology in particular, is a very exciting area of research and new treatment. The first of those new drugs is now available to Scottish patients, but only as a second stage uh, intervention. Does the Minister accept that such new drugs do hold out hope, hope that we can turn cancer into a chronic disease, a chronic condition, rather than a life-limiting one, but that they also pose challenges for us, challenges over cost of these drugs and the balance between treatment and prevention? President, so there's not enough time. Uh, I believe there's issues we should look at about dermatology. It costs three times as much to employ a consultant to work in a, work, a waiting time initiative clinic than it does uh, normal. We do not better just to staff them uh, pro uh, properly. I would thank Fiona McLeod and Maskett for their work and there's so much we can do not just in treatment but in moving the emphasis to prevention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I remind members to use full names? It's a matter of accessibility and also for the official report. I call on Aileen McLeod to be followed by Jackson Carlow. Uh, thank you, Presenting Officer. And I'd also like to begin by congratulating uh, my friend and colleague uh, Fiona McLeod on uh, securing this debate on skin cancer, which, as we've heard, is actually one of the most uh, preventable forms of cancer. Now, malignant melanomas are now the most common cancers in teenagers and young adults in Scotland, and they account for 24% of all new diagnoses. And, of course, we shouldn't forget that more people are actually surviving cancer, but education and awareness are key, because for malignant mel um, melanoma, common signs include a growth or sore that won't heal or which itches and hurts or changes to a mole. And while these signs are becoming more widely known, we really do need to get that early diagnosis. And it is vital that our young people are aware of the risk of melanoma, that they are encouraged to develop healthy sun behaviours, and that they are confident in seeking help. Now, a recent study by Stirling University in partnership with the Teenage Cancer Trust that was published recently in the BMJ concluded that Scottish adolescents have poor sun protection practice and low skin cancer awareness and girls in particular adopted riskier sun-related behaviour despite having greater awareness of skin cancer-related risk. Now, the research recommended that urgent action is required to, pr to promote positive sun-related behaviour and increase skin cancer awareness among uh, sc Scottish young people. Now, Mascot, in their very helpful briefing, mentioned how they delivered sun awareness information to 8,000 pupils in 26 primary schools across Glasgow last year, and that they will continue that work this year as part of the 2014 legacy. And similarly, the Teenage Cancer Trust, through its uh, education programme, also runs an annual summer sun safety campaign called Shunburn. And this is a joint media and education campaign encouraging young people to love the sun, respect your skin by taking simple steps to reduce the risk of skin cancer. And it includes lesson plans for teachers and guidance 
for schools on developing their own sun safety policy. In my view, uh, these are important and complementary tools which give our young people the information that they need to look after themselves and enjoy the sunshine that we often feel we see so little of, but without putting themselves at risk. So in closing, planning officer, information and education for our young people on sun safety and skin cancer will, in my view, be um, absolutely vital to addressing the increasing incidence of this cancer in Scotland. And as Fiona McLeod um, said earlier, educating young people about their health stays with them throughout their lives. You know, melanoma is not entirely preventable, but recognising the risks of overexposure to the sun and acting accordingly will certainly reduce that risk. And I hope that in time we will see a reduction in these figures as the messages about the importance of sun safety reach a wider audience. That is a practical and constructive way in which we can work to tackle the problem that Fiona McLeod has so rightly identified and brought to the Chamber uh, this afternoon. And I look forward to hearing the Minister's response. Many thanks. I now call Jackson Carlaw to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Uh, can I as well congratulate uh, Fiona McLeod? This is the second very worthwhile debate she's brought to the Chamber recently. And also, of course, uh, congratulate Mascot, who not just in advance of this debate, but I think throughout uh, this Parliament have brought very important uh, education to members. I'm afraid I'm a walking disaster in this particular area. Uh, I'm red-haired, somewhat less lustrous than it once was. I'm blue-eyed, I'm fair-skinned, uh, I have mild vitiligo, uh, and I learned very early on as a teenager that, in fact, it doesn't need to be sunny for you to get sunburned. Ultraviolet rays penetrate clouds, uh, and I discovered that to my cost uh, abroad. Uh, at the risk of uh, a headline saying Tory MSP confesses to wearing makeup, can I say that I do? I wear a, a, a Clinique, other brands are available on request, uh, for men moisturiser, which has at its core a factor 21. And I wear that actually all the time. And I think that one of the lessons that I think we should be promoting in education is that you cannot anticipate the weather nor can you sometimes anticipate the UV strength that there is in the, in the, in the sun penetrating cloud. And actually, I think a far better thing for young people, particularly children, would be for us to get into a habit of families simply getting their children to put on a layer of uh, a sun cream or a sun protection factor cream as a matter of course, particularly during the summer months when the risks are at their highest because it is not just the case that it, is a, that it is on a hot, sunny day that you are at risk. You can be at risk in all sorts of less obvious weathers. In fact, I've only got to walk up a windy beach to get sunburned, uh, frankly, so I have to be pretty well lathered up with stuff. And I think that uh, if you are going to make a meaningful change against this typical West of Scotland or Scottish complexion, then the habit of getting into of wearing some sort of protection factor is an important lesson for us to make. The, the second point I'd like to talk about is the ongoing availability of ipilimumab, which is the first genuine treatment that I think we've seen, which is offering real hope to uh, sufferers of uh, skin cancer. Now, um, it was, of course, previously uh, available in England under the Cancer Drugs Fund. NICE then, uh, then the SMC made it available as a secondary course of treatment in Scotland. It will in fact be the first drug, I believe, to go through the new approvals process when there is a recommendation or an, an effort now for it to be seen as a first course treatment uh, for skin cancer. And I think and I hope, although this is out with the Minister's responsibility to deliver, I very much hope that the SMC are persuaded of that case because you only have to see the benefit that it has given, particularly to some of the young people that we have been talking about who are sufferers of skin cancer, who have had a very meaningful extension both to the quality and length of life ahead of them as a result of access to this drug. Uh, I hope that we are able to see an extension of that uh, to, fr to primary use as a treatment for skin cancer. I hope the SMC are persuaded of that case. And I hope, as I said at the start, that the government's information campaign, in so much as it can, doesn't simply focus on that very hot, sunny day, but recognises that UV treatment, UV rays, are dangerous in all sorts of weathers, and that getting into the habit of wearing a sun protection factor cream would be of advantage to us all. 
Thank you. I now call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Richard Simpson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer, and let me join others in congratulating Fiona and bringing this uh, important and interesting uh, debate to, to, to Parliament. Um, it, it's perhaps worth just looking at a little bit of the science that under, uh, underpins some of this, uh, the ultraviolet rays that we are talking about are in the, freak, the, the wavelength of 100 to 400 nanometers. It's quite a narrow range uh, of uh, the light that causes the problem, but a very important and omnipresent uh, part of, of, of light. Uh, and it's particularly interesting that uh, the part of uh, ultraviolet light that's most likely to reach us is, in fact, the most dangerous part of that narrow range. Um, I myself, uh, as others, and Jackson Carlow has just been delineating some of his experience, I got uh, so badly sunburnt that I actually had sunstroke in 1956 as a 10-year-old and had to be hospitalised. Now, my father as a GP did a very important thing in the back of that, and he actually counselled me that I should regularly, for the rest of my life, look at my skin critically and describe some of the, the things that I might see in my skin that I should pay uh, close attention to. And I think that is an important point that I hope all people involved in uh, providing advice to people who've been burnt uh, give to people, because it's simple and it's virtually cost-free. Uh, and you don't need to be particularly technical, just anything uh, on your skin, a change, don't imagine uh, that it is a trivial matter. And I say that in particular context because I had a good friend who was a councillor of ours in Aberdeenshire called Mitchell Burnett, who started off with a tiny, tiny little black spot on the top of one ear. And when I say tiny, you know, narrower than a pen. No more than, I guess, about uh, 20 millimetres across. Uh, I, no, less than that. Quite small. But it killed them. It took a while to do it, but it, they clipped it out of the ear, but it came back, went onto his scalp, and eventually it killed them. So the start can be uh, quite small and early action. Yes, I will. Ken Mack can agree with me. The, the, the very good advice from uh, Dr. Girish Gupta, who's a dermatologist at Monklands Hospital, that the advent of uh, digital cameras makes this very easy. That if people were to, for example, take a photograph of their own back um, and compare it you know, year on year, this is a very good way of working out of their head and neck, a very good way of detecting moles. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, I wonder if my wife will allow me to improve my camera on the basis of that advice, which sounds very good advice indeed. Uh, let me just pick up, Jackson Carlow talked about uh, walking under clouds, and actually the science is quite interesting. Where the cloud is thin and high, the risk of UV impact is raised compared to totally clear skies. And I think that's a point that people are relatively uh, uh, unaware of. The other thing I want to just cover in the remaining short time that I have uh, is that this is a, an issue for the whole population, even if they never go in the sun, because climate change is actually changing the impact uh, of UV. Um, the, the increase in temperature in the uh, troposphere is matched by a decrease in temperature in the stratosphere, in other words, the upper bit. And as that happens, that is promoting the growth uh, of a particular cloud type uh, called the uh, polar uh, stratospheric clouds, uh, which increase the size of holes in the ozone layer and let more UV through. So there are issues for us all that will protect people who are particularly susceptible uh, to this. Because where ozone holes happen, uh, it, it, it comes through. Let me uh, just close by saying um, I will go away and look at my uh, personal makeup as a result of uh, Jackson Carlos' uh, comment. I did notice uh, in looking this morning uh, at who'd signed the motion that no Tories and no Liberals had actually signed. Um, I'm delighted to see Jackson Carlaw here. And, presiding officer, I have therefore clue, con concluded that for the Tories and the Liberals, their time in the sun is over. Thank you very much. Can I once again remind members of the chamber to use full names? Members of the public who are watching our proceedings may not be as familiar as we all are with colleagues. Dr Richard Simpson to be followed by Kevin Stewart.
Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I join with others in congratulating Fiona MacLeod on this timely debate, which is a, an important one. Uh, and uh, Fiona did refer to the fact of the, de the uh, briefing from MASCOT, the Melanoma Action and Support Scotland, uh, which was indeed very helpful and, and uh, reminded me of some of the issues which I have been concerned over the years about in this area. Um, I want to start with the educational side. Um, there, is, there are health and well-being uh, education uh, uh, going on in the schools, um, and I would ask the Minister whether he will undertake to ensure that his education colleagues make sure that that education programme includes uh, um, uh, something for every child uh, on the exposure dangers, but also the use of sunbeds. And can I, at that point, pay tribute to my colleague Ken McIntosh for all his work on sunbeds, which I think has, has helped to make significant changes and, and, and make people more aware. I hope that uh, also that uh, he will look at whether the chief inspector in the education field will actually raise this issue uh, as part of the assessment of nurseries and schools. We are trying to encourage children more and more to play outside in nurseries, and that is great, but it, on the other hand, unless they're properly protected, uh, then it's a problem. And I would like to ask him to ensure that the inspectorate actually ask the nursery schools whether they have a policy in place and check whether that policy is adequate. I'd like my voice to be added to those who've already mentioned the Commonwealth Games. I think it is an important part of Scotland uh, promoting these games uh, that we ensure that the awareness of the dangers of sun, and let us hope it is sunny, uh, 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 or at least there is uh, 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 an awareness at the games and as others have pointed out of course as long as it uh, even when it's cloudy there may be problems deputy presiding officer i want to turn to the question of early diagnosis early diagnosis is absolutely critical as others have said the survival rates are really excellent if we diagnose early but i have to say that apart from public awareness which has already been discussed and i won't go into and needs to be pursued the fact that general practice training has, has been reduced for dermatology uh, since I trained, I think is a, has been a bad move. I had a three month attachment on dermatology and that recognized that 40% of, of those who were students were going to end up as GPs. And the thing we were going to see most of was actually skin problems. Now, GPs get five days undergraduate training. And I think that this is wrong, and I think it needs to be looked at in terms of the training programs, because the daily workload in this area is, is very significant, and the growth in melanoma, and the growth in, in skin problems is, is significant. The pressure on dermatology departments is substantial and growing. Ken McIntosh referred to the fact that we need constant waiting time initiative to keep the thing under control. But there have been two areas, Forth Valley and Lanarkshire, where the redesign of services have cut the waiting times in outpatients by uh, the numbers attending as outpatients by 25% without in any way impairing patient safety. So can I again ask the Minister that where redesign is shown to work in this way that, and it is safe, then it, the redesign should be rolled out to every board. The Minister will know that Labour has advocated a much stronger role for inspection and monitoring for Health Improvement Scotland. And this uh, proposal is in part to ensure where benchmarking shows variation and new approaches work, they must be rolled out to every board and rolled out rapidly. And this is a very good example of it. Deputy Presiding Officer, I'll finish by saying that the immunotherapy uh, referred to is the first of a new class of drugs in treating cancer and its uh, arrival is extremely welcome. It does extend life significantly. Uh, and I hope that the SMC will, applying the appropriate rules, regard this as a treatment which can be used at an earlier stage in the treatment of skin cancer. But of course, we will wait and see, and it would be wrong for politicians to interfere in what we have set up under a new system which all parties have now subscribed to. Thank you, President. Officer. Many thanks. And finally, in the open debate, Kevin Stewart. Um, thank you, President Officer. And like colleagues, I thank Fiona McLeod uh, for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Uh, and I'd like to thank Mascot too um, for the pack that they provided us uh, with, but also 
uh, for their ongoing communication with parliamentarians here, which have made us much more aware uh, of uh, melanoma. Uh, in that pack, of course, we have the, the very serious scenario of that 10-year change with a 36.7% increase, um, which is absolutely huge and shows quite clearly uh, that we uh, need to do uh, more than we currently are. I'm going to be a, a little bit flippant, uh, presiding officer, uh, and uh, talk about uh, something that one of my colleagues said to me the other day, I think it was Tuesday, where it was actually quite bright and sunny. A certain uh, French MSP uh, who likes to use the Doric quite a lot said to me, you better watch out for your wee baldy heed the day, uh, because it was rather sunny. And uh, with this wee baldy heed, uh, I'm quite prone uh, to catching the sun. Now, if um, I was abroad, you know, the natural thing that I would do all of the time while I was away is to cover myself in sunblock. Because like Mr. Carlo, uh, I have got that fair complexion uh, which can cause a huge amount of grief if it is burnt. But we don't have the same habits when we're at home. I have never been sunburnt when I've been abroad. Um, but I have been here uh, on a number of occasions where I've forgotten to take the hat or I've forgotten to protect uh, my head and face. And I think that habit... Um, you know, is something uh, that we need to change. Uh, I'm really pleased at the amount of education that Mascot has carried out. I know um, that Lee Smith was trying to, to do uh, work in the northeast of, of Scotland, um, and I hope that that will continue. But education alone, I don't think, is enough. I think we have to make it a habit. There are certain things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives which just become the norm. This should become the norm, like the slip slap slop in Australia. This should become the norm. I've never, ever been sunburnt in a day where there has, as my grandma uh, would have said, been a heat in the sun. It has always been on overcast days where, you know, you think to yourself going out, this will be fine. And it's not. Now, Mr. Stevenson gave us the scientific aspects of that situation, but beyond that, you know, where many of us are not going to look at that science uh, on a day and daily basis. We must make it the norm. Now, we have the ability um, with Curriculum for Excellence in schools uh, to do so much. And there will not be a school uh, in the country or a pupil uh, who will go through their school years without hearing of climate change at this moment in time. It would not be that difficult to add to the uh, add to that uh, education the dangers of climate change uh, and th the, the, the real dangers um, that exist um, from the sun. So I, I, I don't even think we need to reinvent the wheel. And I think that the minister will no doubt talk to education colleagues about that. I want to finish in, uh, on one point, um, presiding officer, and I think this is extremely important. Um, and I, I actually... Uh, tabled a motion here previously uh, after speaking to, to Mascot, and that's on the issue of um, sunscreen and sunblock itself. Because I do think it's rather ludicrous that there is VAT on these products. Um, and I think that that is something that we don't have the power to deal with here, but in another place they must look at removing VAT from sunscreens and sunblocks. I think that's vital. Thank you, President Officer. Many thanks. I now call on Michael Matheson to respond to the debate, Minister, in around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I, like others, congratulate Fiona McLeod on securing time for this particular debate and bringing this uh, issue to the attention of the Chamber, which is uh, particularly timely given that it is a Sun Awareness uh, Week. Uh, and I have listened with real interest to the points and issues that have been raised uh, by uh, the members in the course of in the debate this afternoon. Uh, several members have already made reference to the uh, statistics which were published by ISD just last week, which do show uh, the extent of the uh, instance of uh, malignant melanoma in Scotland, and they've risen by uh, some 43% uh, in men and 30% in women since uh, between 2002 and 2012, uh, which is an overall 
an uh, increase of almost 37 per cent in a decade, um, as Ken McIntosh made specific reference to. Uh, mal mal malignant uh, melanoma is now the fifth most common uh, cancer in women and the seventh most common uh, cancer in men. Uh, and most worryingly is that over the past decade, between three and five times as many young women uh, aged between 15 and 29 have been diagnosed uh, with skin cancer each year uh, than men. So this is clearly an area where there has been uh, a growing level of uh, occurrence. However, having said that, there are some elements of good news in this agenda. Uh, the statistic... I'll give way to the member. Yep. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, I wonder if the member is aware that in the United States, uh, one in five people can expect to get skin cancer at some point in their life. Minister. Uh, I wasn't aware of that particular statistic, but I think it just demonstrates that it's a, a challenge across the... Uh, uh, many countries in the developed world uh, that, uh, uh, that we have to make sure we address seriously. But as I said, uh, there are some uh, statistics which do show uh, that there is uh, some uh, grounds for optimism uh, because the statistics show that in 2012 uh, there was a lowest number of malignant melanoma uh, uh, diagnoses in women between 15 and 29 in the past decade. Uh, so hopefully that is a reflection of some of the message starting to get through about the uh, start reality of uh, uh, the dangers that the sun uh, can actually have on someone developing uh, skin cancer. Now, there are measures which we've taken uh, followed over recent years, and many members will be aware uh, that Scotland did lead the UK in the approach that we took over uh, sunbeds uh, and the uh, legislative provisions which we put in place in order to try and help to protect citizens from uh, skin cancer by regulating the use of sunbeds. And I think it's only right and we put on record the tremendous amount of work that Ken McIntosh took forward uh, in pursuing that particular agenda. I suspect uh, we wouldn't have arrived at the point where we finally arrived at in the Public Health Act uh, had it not been for Ken uh, McIntosh's determination uh, in pursuing this particular issue, which has allowed us to have more robust legislation in uh, place. And I think uh, that helps to make sure that we uh, do uh, make sure that we have the right legislative framework in place in order to deal with issues such as sunbeds. Now, uh, Ken made particular, particular reference to some of the ongoing challenges in this area. He will be aware that the Public Health Act it does not provide for a licensing regime in itself, although it provides for regular regulation around the use of uh, sunbeds. Uh, but it may be of interest to the Chamber that some eight councils have already put in place a licensing provision uh, in order for uh, the provision of a uh, sunbed uh, uh, operation. Uh, we are already in discussions with COSLA to look at what we can do to encourage the other local authorities uh, to take up this particular approach to uh, licensing and we will be encouraging them to do so. Uh, and of particular interest to Fiona MacLeod, Eastern Bartonshire Council um, are uh, going to introduce uh, a licensing uh, regime uh, as of the 1st of July uh, this year uh, in order to look at how they can regulate this area more uh, fully. I'll give way to the Kevin Stewart. Obviously, we have the uh, firearms and licensing bill, which should be uh, before this parliament very shortly. Is there opportunity there to extend that licensing regime? Minister. Well, the uh, relatives, there's actually already provision in the Entertainment uh, Leisure uh, uh, Civic Government Scotland Act for the purposes of uh, the licensing regime. So there already is legislation that allows for this to happen. What we need to do is to work with the local authorities to make sure they put that in place, and that's the work that we are undertaking uh, with them. Now, a number of members have made uh, reference to issues around um, uh, education, uh, and I, I'm sure some members will recall uh, the programme which we ran in October 2012 uh, in partnership with Cancer Research UK, uh, RUV uh, Ugly, uh, which uh, was targeted in particular at the dangers of sunbeds uh, amongst the, the, uh, being used amongst the 16 to 24 uh, year olds. The evaluation from that uh, programme uh, showed it to be uh, very positive uh, and demonstrated an increasing knowledge and understanding of the risks associated uh, with sunbeds. 
and a number of other members have made reference to public awareness and education programmes that have been undertaken by uh, Mascot and other uh, uh, third sector organisations, uh, for example, Cancer Research UK, the uh, uh, SunSmart campaign, and the Teenage Cancer Trust uh, uh, Shunburn uh, campaign, which I will touch on uh, later if I have time. Uh, so it is important we also put on record our thanks to those organisations for the tremendous amount of work they do undertake in raising awareness. Now, several members have made reference specifically to the Commonwealth Games and the opportunity that the Commonwealth Games uh, presents. Um, and I am uh, sure that we are all hoping that the weather during the Commonwealth Games will be bright uh, and possibly sunny uh, for the course of the Games itself. Um, uh, I understand it has been agreed uh, with the hosts, uh, uh, the, uh, the Games organisers, that they do recognise this presents an opportunity to get some public health messages across. Uh, and we are uh, working with them in order to drive home our skin cancer awareness message uh, due as part of the Commonwealth Games uh, programme, particularly at young adults, uh, by ensuring that everyone attending the Games are aware of the importance of staying safe in the sun, uh, even if the weather is not that great. But as I am sure you will be aware, that the organising committee uh, are also uh, looking at what training they can provide to their workers around health improvement measures, which includes uh, cancer risk factors such as sun protection, eating well and also stopping smoking. Uh, which is part of the work we are doing with them. Additionally, I understand the organising committee are also working with a third sector organisation in order to source sun cream for workers at the Games uh, to ensure that everyone uh, is contributing to this particular uh, programme of sun protection. And alongside that, for specta uh, spectators, uh, the option of a Games visitor kit is being explored by the organising committee which could include helpful items such as skin, sun cream and a poncho. Uh, poncho is probably more likely to be required than the sun cream, but nevertheless, um, uh, the committee are exploring this as a way of helping to try and articulate uh, the risks and important elements of this. I mentioned, preside officer, just drawing my remarks to a close, the work that has also been undertaken by the Teenage Cancer uh, Trust, because it is a campaign which is aimed at educating young people in, class, in the classroom setting about the risk and the harm of sun exposure and the use of sunbeds, a point that was raised by Richard Simpson in his contribution. This is a specifically tailored programme for schools in order to educate them, uh, and it is called the Shun uh, Burn Campaign, uh, which they will be taking forward uh, over the coming weeks and months. And it is about also educating youngsters, not only on the risks, but also if they suspect someone may be at risk, is giving them the helpful nudge to go and get advice and support. But I'm also more than happy to share his particular point around uh, the inspection regime in our educational establishments uh, to be taken forward by our education ministers and to, uh, to consider the point he's made. Uh, so I'm very conscious of time, uh, but I think members have raised a number of important points, including issues around access to treatment, uh, which we are taking forward some measures on. But I hope members can be assured that we recognise the importance of this particular issue and will continue to take forward a range of measures in partnership with third sector colleagues to look at what more action is necessary in order to make sure that we do all we can to prevent any further increases in the level of skin cancer in Scotland. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes Fiona MacLeod's debate on UV radiation awareness to prevent melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer. And I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30pm. <laughs>